In this video, I'm going to be guiding you through chapter 2.8 through to chapter 2.9. The market economic system is also known as the free market. So these are when all resources are allocated by the market by private producers and consumers, and there is very little government intervention involved. As stated before, all resources are privately owned, there is minimal government intervention, firms will produce the highly demanded goods, they will find the cheapest way to produce these for the people who are willing and able to pay. The advantages of the market system is that the quality of goods and services will be very high due to competition for profits. They'll be very quick to respond to the needs of the consumers. It is highly efficient meaning that they can produce more for less and for the people who demand it. And lastly, there's more choice for the consumers. The disadvantages, however, is that there will be a lack of public goods and merit goods due to a lack of government intervention. Necessary goods will not be produced for the low income as they do not have the capacity to spend. Harmful goods will be produced. The negative impact on society will be ignored and there will be a rise in monopoly power. Chapter 2.9 Market Failure and Government Intervention So what's a public good? A public good is a good that can be used by the general public and consumed by one person and does not exclude the consumption of other consumers within the economy. These include streetlights, roads, parks, and national defense. Now, market failure occurs is when there's an under-provision of public goods. So this is when the private sector does not supply public goods due to a lack of profit. Under-provision will lead to a low quality of life, which we lack parks, transportation, and education. It needs to be non-excludable and non-rivalrous in consumption. This means that you cannot restrict anyone from using the product. For instance, the military, you cannot exclude any of your citizens living in your country from protection from the military. And non-rivalrous in nature means that other people can also enjoy the benefits of this public good. Again, the military. And government will need to produce these public goods with the revenues from tax. Next, we have merit goods. These are goods which create a positive effect on the community and ought to be consumed more. So these goods have a positive effect to a third party. This means that the third party is not directly involved in a deal or activity, but still gets some benefit from it. Examples of merit goods include schools, as it provides a productive workforce in the future. Hospitals, as the population can be healthy and productive. And healthy foods. Again, keeping the population healthy and out of hospitals. And the problem with most economies is that merit goods are underproduced. And because they are underprovided, they'll be underconsumed. And consumption of merit goods has positive spillovers effects for third parties. For example, a healthier and more productive workforce. In the case for demerit goods, these are goods which create a negative effect on the community and ought to be consumed less. So this has negative effects to a third party and overconsumed. An example will be smoking. So the person next to you has zero involvement in the transaction, but yet they are suffering from passive smoking. So clearly smoking causes harm to other people. Fast food causes health issues and alcohol causes health and social issues within the country or economy. As stated previously, overconsumption of demerit goods has negative spillovers effects to third parties, and it generates external costs, such as health problems, social issues, and addiction. And finally, monopoly power. This is a single seller with significant market power that operates in more than one country. The problem with them is that they can price gouge, which causes elevated prices for consumers. And at the same time, they can restrict their output, causing difficulty to purchase a good. The reason for this market failure is because monopolies abuse their power as they will aim for profit maximization strategies which leads to a lack of competitiveness. As investments lead to higher costs, 
they will underinvest, they will increase their prices for more profits, which leads to an overall reduction in the quality of their product, clearly exploiting their market power within the economy or country. I hope that helped. Hope you guys have a good day. Bye bye.